But the entire nation is focused on this election. The hopes and aspirations of the people of the country are riding on the voters of Karnataka. I do not wish to burden this opening statement with too many numbers, but since I believe that numbers tell the story better than words, let me share a few numbers with you. Firstly, during the period 2013-18, Karnataka's gross state domestic product at constant prices has increased from 6 lakhs 43,292 crore to rupees 9 lakhs 49,111 crore. This is a real GDP growth of 8% a year. Secondly, the average resident of Karnataka is richer than he was five years ago. Per capita income in current prices has jumped from rupees 77,309 to rupees 1,74,551. This is a growth of 125% in five years compared to the All India growth of 59%. Thirdly, unemployment in Karnataka is amongst the lowest in all the states of the country. In April 2018, it was 2.6%. The All India number is 5.9%. And by comparison, Gujarat is 5%. Fourthly, Karnataka has an enviable macroeconomic record. In all the five years of the Congress government, the average fiscal deficit was 2.26%. On the revenue account, the average surplus, let me repeat, it is surplus, not a revenue deficit. The revenue surplus was 0.08%. Fifthly, under Sri Siddharamanya, development and welfare have gone hand in hand. Even while the GDP was growing at 8%, social sector expenditure consistently accounted for over 40% of total expenditure. And the results are visible in reduced infant mortality rate, increased electricity consumption, and many other parameters. All these have been possible because the state has had a stable government under one chief minister. I want to recall to the people of Karnataka that Sri Siddharamanya is the first chief minister who has completed five years in office after the legendary chief minister Sri Devarajas. By way of comparison, look at the period 2008-2013. The people of Karnataka gave the BJP 110 seats. And what did they get in return? They got an unstable government, and three chief ministers in five years. It was perhaps the worst government in the history of Karnataka. It is the same incompetent men and women, Sri Yaddi Urappa, Sri Sadanand Gauda, Sri Jagdish Shatar, who are leading the BJP today. And that is why they don't speak of their achievements as chief minister. They speak about the alleged shortcomings of Sri Siddharamaya as Chief Minister. Just as Sri Siddharamaya speaks about his record, why doesn't Sri Yadivarapa or Sri Jagdish Shatter or Sri Sadam Gauda speak about his achievements as Chief Minister? The answer is they have no achievements to speak about. The challenge before the next government of Karnataka is twofold. The first challenge is to maintain the momentum of development. 
This can be done only if there is a stable government under one chief minister. The second challenge is to boldly confront the RSS BJP dispensations designs to wreck the federal system, weaken state governments, and impose their pernicious agenda of one history, one culture, one religion, one language, and one code of behavior. I can speak in no better city than Mangaluru against this pernicious agenda. This city is known for its long history, composite history, multi-culture, multi-religion, multi-language and tolerance. You are familiar with the designs of the RSP, RSS BJP dispensation. I think it's important that we stop the RSS BJP from coming below the Vindhyas. Fortunately, the southern states have so far been relatively free from the poison of the Hindu Rashtra and majoritarian approach. This is the place to stop the RSS BJP. All southern states have stood up to the RSS BJP. They are Capacity to challenge is limited to Karnataka, and if in Karnataka this challenge is defeated, the RSS BJP will be contained. In conclusion, I appeal to the electorate of Karnataka to vote clearly in favor of the Congress, and trust to the Congress and Sri Siddharamaya the development of the state and the welfare of the people, and help preserve the federal and multicultural nature of our constitutional system. Thank you.